four, three. Fuck it. There's no, there's no words on it. Tomorrow. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Because I've never seen that. Fucking thing sucks. There's no words there. Fuck it. There's no, there's no words That's on tomorrow. it. Tomorrow. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Because I've never seen that. Fucking thing sucks. There's no words there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what. Go. Go. I can't do it. Fuck it. Go. Go. I can't do it. Fuck. Fuck it. Go. Go. I can't do it. Fuck it. Go. Go. I can't do it. Fuck. Fuck. Thanks again for watching. Fuck it. There's no. There's no words on it. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. I've never seen that. Fucking thing sucks. There's no words there. Fuck it. Get away. fuck is up everybody welcome back to another dark horse live uh tune in hang out we'll be chilling for about an hour hope everyone's doing good hanging in uh, appreciate you all for tuning in looks like we got some ig some twitchers and some youtubers so we're all here uh we are smoking on some skittles joints uh, to the chat Re referencing to the chat um but you already know how we do this show the start of the show Get my ass on IG film. There we go. Um, uh, free shit. Free shit. All right. So what are we going to give away first today? Uh, right off the gate, Savage Hulk. It's a 12-pack. Uh, Savage Hulk. How are you going to win this one? Free shit email, which will be on top of your screen right now. Or if you're on the IG live, or I'm sorry, the IG and uh, you click on my Dark Horse Live in the signature, it'll take you to our little page we set up that you can enter the contest right below without opening a new browser. But to win these, you're going to have to email darkhorsegeneticslive at gmail.com. Uh, Savage Hulk, let's go with Macho Man Randy Savage. That's the keyword in the subject line. Macho Man Randy Savage. We'll take the fifth person, and uh, yeah, you win them shits for free. Let's do another one back to back. Grape Cobbler. Grape Cobbler. Grape Smash. Um, Skittles, bitch slap. How's about that? So, yeah. This one. How about six person on the same email on top of your screen? Uh, smashing grapes, bitch. Smashing grapes, bitch. Add the bitch part. That's the most important part. Shit. All right. Now we've given away two packs. We will give away a little bit more towards the end of the show. You already know. But uh, I'm excited today because today we're doing a little bit of a non-traditional show. Uh, we're going to talk football. Uh, I'm a huge fucking football fan. And uh, we were lucky enough to have NFL alum in here. Uh, so we have uh, 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 Nathan Palmer, or known as the real Napalm, uh, has stopped by. And uh, I'm going to ask this dude as many questions as I can about <laughs> football. Yes, so. Sir. Uh, with that said, let's bring in Nathan, or the real Napalm. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Oh, what's up, there everybody? He is. There he is. There we go. If you could twist that mic just a little bit to the right or left, so yeah. ain't blocking your face um, entirely, there you go, boom. Boom, I like to cover my face up sometimes. <laughs> a little bit. So, uh, sweet, thanks for coming in, man. I really no appreciate you coming down. No um, problem, brother. Typically how we do on this show, we ask people right off the gate, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about where you're from, the first time you smoked cannabis, and do you know like what it was? Was it you know, the strain or anything, or was it just swag, or <laughs> where are you from? Man, uh, so I was originally born in Elkhart, Indiana. Um, I went to school out in, in Chicago, Illinois, near Chicago, Illinois. Um, so Midwest is, is pretty much what I, what I say raised me. Um, my, my parents are from the South, so I have a little bit of a Southern background to me. Um, and uh, the first time I smoked marijuana, probably, you know, I was a late bloomer, so it was like my senior in high school when I went to 
my college visit. <laughs> that nice. was the first time I did it. Uh, and Cherry Diesel was actually the strain. Word. That's cool yeah. that you remember it. Yeah. Um, so that was it. That was going to ask me, uh, or brings me to my next question is, at what point did you think you could be a pro athlete? So I'm, I'm taking it in high school. You were not a stoner. You're not a, you know, you were a straight jock, serious yeah. about your craft. Was football your only sport? Did you play basketball or any other sports? No, I played I play basketball. I ran track. track. Um, I tried to do baseball. My track coach was not having it, though. <laughs> yeah. He was like, no, nah, he didn't want me to get hurt. But um, I played basketball, football. Um, I used to train with, like, the soccer team sometimes. So I was just kind of like an athlete. I was an active kid. Like, I was kind of all over the place, like, very, very energetic and, and whatnot. So my gotcha. parents just let me kind of do what, what I needed to do. At what point did you realize, like, I could be a pro athlete or I'm going to get serious with this shit? Honestly, um... I kind of always felt like I could. I like really, I, I've been a person of faith, like for real. Um, growing up, I grew up in church and everything. So I always believed that like, you know, as, as far as I believe I could go, I, I really would go. So um, I never kind of paid attention to the naysayers. It was always, there was never a doubt in my mind that I wouldn't go um, to the NFL. I think when it became reality is kind of when, um, Honestly, up until my senior year playing in the in the championship, um, I think that's when I saw uh, my ability be able to go beyond just being talented. It was like more of a drive. I think that was that was the game that that it was like, all right, I want to play at the next level for sure. Did uh, like cannabis propaganda, I'm gonna call it, like make you feel guilty to smoke as a youth, or you know, like the Dare program, like they're coming to scare the shit out of you with all that bullshit <laughs> or whatever, like. You know what? I, I mean, I was an aspiring athlete, never on your level, but I remember <laughs> in a younger age, you know, at the parties or whatnot, like going over hit the joint, being like, ah, I'm, this is going to be fucking up my career. Like, <laughs> you know what? Honestly, no. It was just my dad. I had a strict dad. <laughs> my father was like one of those, if he caught us doing anything. Um, and I had a wild older brother who was like 10 years older. So, like, I, I kind of couldn't get away with anything because my brother had done it all. Okay, so, um, I think also I used to have trouble breathing, like, growing up. So, for me, it was kind of like I didn't want to smoke because I didn't want to be out of breath all the time. For sure. Um, but then I kind of realized it has other, other healing powers, for so sure. to speak, other than just, you know, smoking. So Got you. Um, can you explain what it's like to be a student athlete? Um, y did you smoke cannabis in college? And what yeah. was the drug testing like when you were going through the college program? Man, I did. I smoked. <laughs> I should probably should say this one. But, uh, <laughs> I'll say, for the record, let's preface this whole little interview or whatever. You can tell me to fuck off on any of these questions. I don't want to get you nah, in any kind good. of trouble. You don't got to name drop anybody. You know. Honestly, man, I, like I say so much in my music, if people actually paid attention, then they would kind of understand. Um, I'm an open book. But... um. I think in college is kind of where I really started um, really falling for cannabis for Mary Jane. Um, I felt like I could focus more once I got into college. I think my freshman year was the only time I had a scare with drug testing. <laughs> um, I, I remember smoking the same day I got tested, and it was random drug testing. So um, I smoked. And, like, literally two hours later, we got hit with the, hey, come up and take a test. You got random uh drops this this day i was like oh man i just messed up i'm about to get suspended my mom and dad is about to get on me um i went in took the test left i just knew i was about to get in trouble three days passed nothing happened i'm walking around and nervous like coach uh everything cool you know we good you know uh Coach, like, yeah, why was wrong? You acting weird, Nate. I'm like, oh, no reason, you know, just <laughs> just checking, you know, making sure everything good. So nothing ever really happened. You never uh, popped hot or anything? Never, never dropped hot, man. A day in my life. Been blessed, bro, because I've actually, like, always flirted with it. I mean, you would think you would fail if you just smoked right before you dropped. Like, man. You think the drug they, tests were, like, they were whatever. You were a star in college. You, you yeah. think they just sort of passed that one to the side, possibly? I don't. To, I, to be honest with you, I'll be real. They told me, because I asked later. I was, like, always cool with all the, <laughs> <laughs> the like, trainers and stuff. So um, I asked, why didn't I fail? Because I was like, I definitely smoked that day. Um, they said because I didn't normally smoke consistently, 
I probably didn't have enough in my system to even like drop dirty. Sure. And possibly the time frame. Yeah, the time I know frame of everything. Professional athletes that smoke are, are, are have the ability to test, you know, clean mm -hmm. just because of the low fat, you know, count and the metabolism's high. And oh yeah, I mean, you're streamlined athletes, so oh, yeah. like the I metabolism don't know how is I there to clean all the time. <laughs> uh, so as far as the student athlete though, like, did it suck or was it awesome? Because you hear both sides. I've seen, you know, I've, I should say I've seen both sides a little bit of it. Is it? Is Honestly, it, the only thing for me that sucked was they kind of pigeonhole you. As a as a student athlete, it's only like certain classes you can really take um, in order to fit the schedule of playing football and everything. But um, as far as like um, school, I think we got a lot of uh, – we were kind of spoiled as athletes, especially at Northern. We had a great um, financial – I mean, not financial, uh, student athlete advisor or whatever. Uh, Miss Francine, she definitely did a great job, but like making sure our our scheduling our our classes aligned with making it kind of easier on us to to maintain high level uh, high GPAs and everything sure. um, during the season. And I think because of that, our our coaches always worked with her hand in hand to make sure we wasn't overloaded. We had like extra study uh, hall, extra study sessions. Um, and our team was kind of really good. So, um, like, a lot of times people wouldn't have to watch film. They'd rather just go study. So we were kind of, like, really weird about that. Um, you plus just show like, up and beat them. You didn't have to watch all the film. You just go do your book work. Yeah, we yeah. just went and did our book work. And we were smart. So, like, a lot of us were nerds, really. Um, and, like, a lot of the big schools rejected us. Rejected us. So I would say how heavily recruited. I guess I'll preface just. I don't think I mentioned this in the start of the show or whatever. But yeah. uh, you went to uh, Northern Illinois University yep. and play. Went on to play for the San Francisco 49ers, Indianapolis Colts, Miami Dolphins, Denver Broncos, Ooh. New England Patriots, Ooh. Chicago Bears, Ooh. Oakland Raiders. Ooh. So you were you were a journeyman of man, the NFL. Man, um, bouncing around, baby. I was <laughs> on tour, the NFL <laughs> tour, baby. What's up? <laughs> but uh, were you heavily recruited going into college? Did anybody do any wild shit, like, you know, bring the ladies Man, over I or anything? I'll tell you, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, honestly, I had three schools that were looking at me. Um, two of them were, were D1 schools, um, the one being Northern, the second being IU, Indiana University. Um, and oddly, um, I don't know if you remember a player named Tracy Porter. He ended up playing, I think, here or against here. I yeah. think he had a little stint here yeah. for a second, yeah. yeah. Did he get um, shot here? Ooh, in the ass? I think so, bro. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, but TP was my uh, my uh, uh, host at IU, and Coach Hefner had actually offered me a scholarship, but he offered me to play defensive back. And I was about to play defensive back, but then I don't know if you remember, Coach Hep got sick, ended up passing away, and they took my scholarship away. Damn. So it kind of forced me to kind of go to Northern Illinois. Sure. And at the time, Northern was actually a better team. So they had like Garrett Wolf and like Larry English and all those guys. So um, it was like pretty dope to go there instead of going to IU and then help make that team what it became. So Word. I actually have a clip. I don't think we're going to get in trouble for playing this, but I have a clip of you in college that I want to play. Yeah. What Let's we see got? see what you got. <laughs> what we got? Wayne Lurvey, yeah. Chris Martin, Ron Johnson back at Minnesota. Oh, this is funny. Uh, Metrodome's come alive. Oh, third down so and long. Third and ten for Northern Illinois. Football to the nine-yard line of the Huskies. Harnish. Nice throw. Great catch. Off to the oh, races. And speed. look at this. Nathan oh, Palmer, the fast. Of the Huskies, so all the way for the touchdown. Everybody had our receivers in the game to the NFL. <laughs> 91 I think this is the same game. Third and ten here at the Husky 48 yard line. Red shirt freshman and Chandler so Harnish going over the top. Yeah. It's, it's a free run. It's a free run. It's like a baton. I was a free run. Touchdown. Champion. So what was the, what was the uh, 40? 52 yards. What, you want my time? Uh, you Can you time say star in the making of the match? You didn't go combine. Well, if I'm a defensive back, if I'm going to know where anybody is on the field, you better believe it's going to be number eight.
Nice. I was moving, Fast. but that was manufactured, bro. I was. I, I'm not <laughs> even gonna lie to you. I had a great trainer. Shout out to EFT in Chicago, Elias and Land. Actually, you wanna know some number eighty in that clip is my was my trainer going to the league. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's funny. Did you, so going into the league, did you expect to be drafted? And uh, what did you do on draft day? Did you have any interest? Man, honestly, I didn't expect to be drafted until after my pro day. I was like, I, I thought I was going to go undrafted. I'd be lucky to even get into camp. I was like, you know, I just kind of wanted to do it just to say I did it. Because um, all my life, it was just really about music. But what ended up happening was I ended up kind of running very well and performing very well better than what people thought at our uh pro day and we had chandler harness who had like a lot of interest from a lot of scouts so that ended up putting me on the map in a different way to where my agent was getting like way different calls and um i started flying out and seeing all the teams and you know taking all these tests with the doctors and everything and then um came uh i think draft day I didn't want to have a party. My my family kind of invited people over, but then what I wanted to do was like just kind of make music. I didn't expect to get drafted or anything. Um, so what I ended up doing is going to a local studio in Elkhart, and I was literally just sitting there making beats with like my brother, one of his older friends, like kind of all the guys I grew up playing ball with. <laughs> and um, I, I knew my mom and dad would tell me if something was going to happen. I ended up getting a couple calls, probably I think third round was the first call I got. Uh, Miami was the call, but then they ended up picking another receiver, and then I got a call from the Colts, and then they ended up picking T.Y., and then I got a call from the 49ers who told me that they had selected um, A.J. Jenkins in the first round, and they weren't going to take any more receivers, but if I was left at the end of the draft, that they would come to camp. Yeah, they would basically double whatever signing bonus anybody offered. And I was like, what? Word? But <laughs> let's, if it happens, it happens. So then um, I think like fifth round comes around, I get another call from the uh, the Colts, and they're saying they're going to take me. So I'm like, I right, bet I'm about to go to Indy. That's about to be dope. <laughs> Play with Andrew. Um, stay at home. Like, it's about to be dope. Goes across the screen, they select LeVon Brazil, who <laughs> – from who was like one of my rival receivers in the Mac. So I was like, man, all right, well, I'm definitely not going there. I end up, I think, like sixth or seventh round, I get a couple more calls. Um, nobody calls. And, and, uh, I think 49ers end up texting me like, hey, keep hope. You should have been gone by now. If We'll be lucky to get you. So they're playing the whole game. Um, after that, I didn't think anybody was going to call. I got like 15 calls. And I think, like, one call, they started playing the game in the seventh round where the coach would, like, call to be, like, on the line and tie me up. Um, and then they, it ended up being Mr. Irrelevant, and they had me on the line for it. But I thought I was about to be Mr. Irrelevant. They ended up taking Chandler, my quarterback, from Northern, which it was kind of like a bittersweet. It was like, yo, my dog got picked. It's cool. But I thought I was about yeah. to get picked. So. After that, I just didn't answer the phone for them. So any kind of – they and, and, like, it was so funny because they, they knew somebody that was, like, from my hometown as a scout. So they had him calling my my family, like my brother. And then Miami had a scout that was actually from my hometown that went to my brother's school with him. So Miami had him calling my, my house phone <laughs> and my agents on my phone like, nah, we're not going to answer anything. We're going to San Francisco. We're just going to wait for the highest bidder. I think somebody gave him a bid. He told me, he was like, San Francisco is going to match it. If you're down to go, let's just go. Before I can hang up the phone, I was already, you know, and my dad, it was like his favorite team. So I was like, yeah, I, I definitely got to go there. In the league? Yeah, in the league. How How was that, like? culmination of your dreams or like you said it seems to me i mean we'll talk about your music also because we yeah. haven't even touched on that but it seems to me <laughs> music is your first love because yeah. you've been doing music quite a while or whatever and you just as you said on draft day you're like i'm just gonna make some beats yeah. was it like fuck now i gotta go play football or was it like fuck that you know like this is a sweet i'm gonna do this i'm gonna put this music on hold and i'm gonna go make some money or whatever or Man, take, take me through your thought process a little bit it, it, i've always grown up with the thought that like 
playing professional sports was going to give me access to like doing music the way I wanted to do it. So um, I had that mentality like very, very young, but that's because I started being a musician young um, in the church and everything. So um, with me, my thought process was like, finally, I get to like go away from home, get away from the Midwest um, and explore like what I want to do. I've always been a fan of like West Coast music and like, like Chris Brown, I always wanted to write for Chris Brown. And I was hanging out with like Trey going into the league or whatever, Trey song. So um, I always wanted to like be around the writers and, and the creatives um, behind the scenes part. So sure. I felt like that was going to give me access to be able to do it. And then when I landed in the Bay, it was like, man, a whole nother, like my first time ever being on the West Coast. So like the people, the way they was dressing, like the swag, Sure. Um, the music, it was like way, it was a whole different culture shock. And then, shoot, I had money. So <laughs> it was like, man, I get to turn up and do do some things. And then I, I don't know if you remember, but everybody on the team was like, them dudes, like we had Crabtree, we had Randy, mm -hmm. we had Ted Ginn, Kyle Williams, who he was from Chicago. Um, then you had like Brian Timms, who he was coming there. You had Chris Owusu who he played, so um, you had Brett Swain, who he was like, he came from the Packers. So like everybody had their own drip and it was just dope. Um, and then we had like Johnny Morton, who he played in the league. So um, as a as a coaching staff, they was young. So it was it was just real dope. We had a young Giro before he was out here breaking records with quarterbacks, sure. you know what I'm saying? Sure, sure, <laughs> so, that's sweet. So like, that was kind of the, the the vibe going out there, and then great team to go into too. Man. You know what I mean, like, and then like, psh, Kaepernick was the first person I met, bro. Oddly, when I got in the locker room, <laughs> and that ended up being my roommate for like two years. Nice. So like that that was like an experience within itself, just because he taught me the game early, um, as like a backup, and me having to study with him all the time. So a lot of respect for Cat. Or, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. They, they literally blackballed the dude out the league. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? oh yeah. yeah. And that's my dog. Wish him nothing but the best, man. It, it's sad what they're doing to him, but you know, I, I think he knew what he was up against. You know what I'm saying? So that's why he's never like wavered in it, in it, in his journey. Like it, it's funny uh, when he got hurt, he was up here. Uh, and uh, I hope you don't mind me telling this, but he was up he was up in the mountains. I won't tell what city that he be at, but he was up in the mountains, just like his little getaway, and he come do some uh, rehab out here. And I I went up, and we sat down and talked. And and this is before all of this happened, but he was like, "Yeah, people gonna think I'm a little odd this year." <laughs> and I, and I looked at him, and I was like, "Man, I know you do." And I it was different because he had his hair braided, and I had never seen that before from him. And you know, I was like, "Oh, okay, well." Do you know what flipped the switch in him to say, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do this"? Honestly, I think he started tapping into a whole different purpose. Um. Outside of football, I think also the access that his uh, girlfriend, fiance, um, Nessa, shout out to Ness. Um, I think him being partnered with her and being kind of um, motivated to do more um, by her and the circle she's around, I think that's what kind of uh, inspired him to step up. And then just the his background, the the, the whole genetic makeup of where he comes from, his story, sure. um, what he's going through, the family he lives with. I think he's always been a person looking for who he is and what his voice is. And I think that's something that he landed on and he wanted to, to push. Nice. So, yeah. That brings me to a little bit of a shift, but the NFL recently announced that uh, until now, um, player or it's not going to suspend players for uh, cannabis anymore and basically until yeah. now an initial positive drug test for THC could see players required to enroll in a substance abuse program however yeah. a second result in the positive would likely result in a two game ban sep sep subsequent positive results result in bans increasing in length some running up to 10 games so the NFL used to be super anti fucking weed yeah like they fucking hated it and yeah. I guess that it, it, up until now uh, there is something in here I did see the NFL's new THC limit will increase to match the world anti-doping policy which I don't even know what the fuck that means that could be a fine print in there yeah. but uh, I was 
gonna kind of ask you. What's the fine print? <laughs> yeah. My um, bad, I got my finger in my face. Uh, I talked to um, a Big Baby Davis, and I said, "Do you do you actually think cannabis is a performance enhancing drug?" Because when I talked to Big Baby Davis of the NBA, yeah. he told me cannabis helped him focus and slow the game down for him. Yeah. Um, do you I'll see it as yep. a as a performance enhancing drug, or do you just see it as a drug? I don't think or it's not a drug. I don't think it's plant, performance enhancing uh, when it's prescribed and and um, done in the right amounts. I sure. don't think I don't think it's going to magically give you any, you know, super like, you know, I don't know, testosterone, ability, yeah, ability, ability or anything. Hit the ball or catch the ball or any of that. Nonsense. I think a focus though and slowing things down. Yeah, sure. In that kind of sense, yeah, it's a it's an advantage. Did um, you ever play high? Yeah, I definitely did. <laughs> My coaches know it anyway. I don't care. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. Y'all should have like, known I was a rock star coming out of college. <laughs> uh, how was the NFL, like, cannabis around the league? Like, did players meet up after the games and kind of, like, share their cannabis? Was there, like, a circle of stoners, a private circle of stoners? You don't have to name oh, yeah. drop anybody or anything. Yeah, but nah. was it, like... Okay, game's over. We all know, like, so and so's got, like, I guess Ricky Williams, we could say that name. Ricky Williams got the fire. We're going to his Bro, hotel love, room. Ricky Williams is, like, my, the the person I grew up watching. Like, I always, I wore 34 bas- in basketball just because of For Ricky Williams. Yep. That's what I was going to ask. That was one of my questions, actually. Is Ricky an idiot or was he unfairly targeted? Unfairly be- targeted. Be- I, think, I think he was ahead of his time. Sure. I think he was ahead of his time. Sure. I mean, I can understand that, too. And the only reason I would say is he's an idiot is because. There's the question of, you know, you're going to be paid six, seven million dollars a year, whatever it may be. But the caveat is you can't smoke cannabis, you know, yeah. and like then again, like I think also is it's a lot deeper than the cannabis for him. Because that's what I said for him. Yeah. I agree with that also. Yeah. Not that I know him, but uh, it definitely seems like they targeted that dude. Like mm-hmm. they were like, we come in to nullify this fucking contract. You know what I mean? And I think he was a sacrificial lamb. I think we, we started to see after a while that he didn't. Uh, um, just go off the deep end after the league. He was one of the ones that kind of um, spiritually was whole and uh, still made smart business moves and, and things after the league. Now, I don't, I didn't follow that closely because I was still coming up, so I'm not sure of everything. But from what I have studied and, like, have followed of him, I think he made a lot of, uh, of great decisions after it. And I think... He also educated himself enough to speak up on behalf of where he was falling short when he was a player and being an advocate for it. Sure. So um, I think kudos to to Ricky. That Um, brings me to a kind of a different area. But on draft day, we've seen people be sabotaged like hours leading up to the draft with like cannabis shit being leaked or pictures being leaked or something around that. That's a dirty game they play. It's like, who do you think is doing that shit? Is it the agents? Is it the teams that's trying to get them later in the draft? Or like, it could be so many people. It's so you know, much, it's so much that's 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 involved each, in that. Each circumstance is probably its own individual, you know, outcome or I guess, whatever you might say, but do you, like it's it's a very strange fucking thing yeah. that happens in cannabis or in the NFL, I mean. Honestly, I think um I think it's anything that's done with big business in mind um has some kind of dirty game to it, especially when you want to be able to win. Sure. Um so it wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't think that it would be beyond some of the 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 front office people to leak certain things to make sure they get players when they want um, or um, agents doing what they want to to manipulate where they want a player to go. Sure. Um, so I w- I wouldn't be surprised. And some I don't know. Um, just the way that the internet works. Some some people are just trolls like that. They might just have something on you as an athlete, and it's like, all right, I know you about to be drafted. Think it's Here funny to fuck with you. Boom! Manti tail you some yeah, shit or whatever. Just yeah, to fuck you, with you, you to fuck me? with you. Yeah. So it's just kind of like that. So um, I don't know, man. Was that was that? a great question, bro. <laughs> Word. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not used to that shit. Um, I'm gonna shift it a little bit to concussions. Um, this is a bit Situation. of a sensitive topic. But uh, do, you, do you think you had many concussions over your career? You play wide receiver, so going yeah. over across the middle, going, you know what I mean? Like, and, and that also mean, leads me up to, like, what do you think is the worst position to play in lieu of concussions? Fullback and middle backer. Sure. Sure. Fullback and middle backer and center. So did, you, did you take many mega hits across the middle or anything that, you know? No, you know what I think most of my impact came from is hitting the ground. 
Sure. A lot of times, like, I don't think people, because I was, like, light, so I was whipped around a lot. Um, and then a lot of my concussions really didn't really happen in the game. A lot of them will happen in practice. Sure. And then it's just kind of you pushing through practice, so um, you, you never really know what will happen then. Um, I Like, I got my first concussion, real bad concussion. I got training for the league. <laughs> in training, just doing a, a right. simple release with no helmet on, and the guy didn't really move, and I got, I kind of got out of there quick, and we ended up butting heads, and pop, and I was out for. They said I was out cold for some seconds. That was like my first concussion, so it, it's kind of weird um, to say how many I really had. Sure, you know, honestly. Do you worry about CTE, and do you have any opinion on, like, cannabis oh, yeah. or CBD for oh, yeah. CTE treatment? Not that we are doctors at all, yep. but uh, do you have any opinion on, you know, CTE and possibly cannabis? I do. I do. I feel like uh, CTE is a thing, um, especially in players um, who there's no telling. The game kind of got faster and more physical as we were growing up, um, and as we see these stories – um, of players that have been passing. Junior Seau, uh, rest in peace, because I was like one of my all-time favorite players. Sure. Um, uh, and the Hernandez story, finding out the, yeah. the big hole in his brain. Yeah, you know, crazy looking brain. Exactly. Um, there's no telling what level of CTE people have, even currently. Like you know, we've watched my boy AB, and that's my homie. Shout out to AB. Um, praying for your dog every day. Um, but people like that um, not being able to tell how to diagnose these things um, currently yet. Um, I feel like CBD um, and marijuana done in moderation, I'll say that, can help. Uh, but we do also see, like, even in Aaron, he smoked every day. Sure. So, so it clearly it's, didn't exactly help the situation. Exactly. Taking so, heavy blows. So I think we got to figure out what, what we can do within this because I know it can help. Um, and I know, especially with CBD, it can help. Um, I just pray that we don't abuse it. Sure. Yeah. Um, do, did anyone, this is a fucked up question, but did anybody ever get fucked with uh, for bringing cannabis on the team plane? For, for bringing t cannabis on the team plane? Yeah. Nope. They ever fuck with you guys? They ever search you guys? NFL private charters, all that shit. Like you guys just get nope. to do what you want. Man, I ain't even gonna lie. I got I got weed through all the time. <laughs> that's when we find. That's when I found out that the dogs don't even search for uh, <laughs> for like for weed and shit. They be searching for bombs and explosives and shit. I said, Oh, I'll bet. <laughs> that's when I start figuring out how much how many nugs you can get in a deodorant stick bottle. <laughs> that brings me to. Uh, who was the best player you ever played with or against? Because you got, I mean, Ooh. you've been in the your tenure in the league is strong. Oh man, that's a that's a big one, man. Uh, I played with so many greats. Oh shit, man. Vaughn Miller, Vaughn Miller. Yeah. Hard. Yeah, I think out of everybody, as far as like how, man, I don't know, bro. <laughs> Hold up, man. <laughs> let me, let me, bro. I played with Randy. I can switch it over real quick. What do you think? What's the best coach you ever played for? Oh, I think you played for Belichick or under the Belichick system. I think yep. you might have been a practice player on that team, but still, you played on the yep. Belichick system. Yeah. So, was Belichick a dick or is he a genius? Is he a cheater? Or what's your opinion on the, the all Pats? Of, all of the above. All of the above. Beautiful. Yeah. All of the above, man. <laughs> Mad genius. I fuck with you, though, Bill. You ain't cheating. You ain't trying, my dog. I rock with you, bro. Um, the best coach, honestly, I think the best coaching, can I just say staff? Yeah, staff. Okay, the, best, the best coaching staff, I'll say, was all together – my 49er staff, my rookie year, um, I feel like they had us so prepared for everything. It was so easy that year. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Like, every like every game that we played in, it was so easy. <laughs> like, it was – even when it, like, looked – like, they had us hyped to play kickoff. That's when they, like, banned playing music <laughs> for the kickoff. They was playing Tony Montana and had the crowd hype. Like, it, it was it was just dope, like, to come into the league. And there was so many – young players playing so that was dope 
Um, I think the best system, though, was uh, Coach Fox and uh, Gase and Goose and them. Really? Yeah. Yeah, man. That shit, like, you, watch, watching that. Um, you went to Super Bowl with that team, no? Yeah. yeah. How yeah. was it like going to Super Bowl? Man, which one? <laughs> so, the first one we lost. It was Denver, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The first you, one we, we lost. Both times to, you went Denver. To be honest with you, yeah. To be honest with you, my experience was a little bit more rock stars um, than the average person, and <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed the first Super Bowl, although we lost and got our ass whooped like that. <laughs> the only reason why is because like I dated the supermodel that day. Like I got, <laughs> I got to take a supermodel on a date. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got to go in the studio with like a real big artist and just, you know, what I'm saying, shoot the shit just because I was playing in the Super Bowl. So I was living my motherfucking life. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, yeah. um, That's like your Al Bundy moment, but it's even bigger than fucking three touchdowns in high school. It's like motherfucker, I was dating a supermodel, playing in the Super Bowl, and fucking yeah. dropping shit in the studio the hell same yeah. fucking day. Like uh, no dead ass. <laughs> like went to practice, left the, got on the bus, went went over. Uh, we was in Jersey City, so then went down to like Manhattan. Um, got down to Manhattan. The chick that I was like talking to. We got like this little uh, hotel room and everything. It was it was it was real player, bro. It was like it was every one of the every bit of a uh, financial advisor's nightmare, <laughs> for nice. sure. I, I, I'm not gonna ask you too many money questions, but what was the dumbest shit you ever bought? What was the dumbest shit I ever bought? Yeah, did you, did you ever did you ever buy something fucking stupid and you were like, what the fuck did I just? Do? Did you buy any tigers or anything stupid, bro? <laughs> Nah, I didn't. I wanted one, bro. I, I ain't. I ain't even gonna hold you. I did want one. one. Um, <laughs> can I cuss? My yeah, bad. fuck yeah. Okay, my bad. Uh, yeah. Nah, that wasn't a. I think the dumbest shit I ever bought. Okay, so I was dating. I was dating somebody, and and I was like, man, I really want. I really want you so bad that like <laughs> I'm gonna get you whatever you need. And I just got a car. <laughs> like I went out and bought that shit cash. Sure. Ain't say shit to my mom, my dad, my financial, my agent, nobody. <laughs> just got the car. <laughs> Was out in LA stunting with everything. <laughs> Ran off from me and started cheating on me. Broke my heart. I was like, damn, now I need the car back. I don't know how to get the car back. Shit, that was the dumbest shit I ever did. Sure. That, that, and I got some uh, real expensive earrings when I was with the Colts. And... um Went home drunk one night after a, a party, and I had my uh, earrings in my lap and got out my car and was right over a drain. And that sh them bitches went down no. the drain. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I'll never wear no motherfuckers <laughs> like that again. <laughs> I hate so to laugh. Was, yeah. Oh, shit. That and then, uh, shit, I paid for like a, uh, a stripper party one time for one of my homies because he ate. This was the dumbest shit, cause he had gotten into it with his baby mama. So I was like, and his baby mama got mad at me, like I was trying to help and get in between it, and she got mad at me. So I was like, fuck that, we going to Miami, nigga. So we left and went to Miami, and then I, uh, and I don't know how I was doing this all on like, cause I really wasn't balling like that, <laughs> like I wasn't the superstar, like I wasn't Emmanuel in them, so. Like, I don't know how I was doing this shit, but I definitely had fun, to be honest with you, bro. <laughs> Word. Well, with that, I'm going to kind of bring it over a little bit to music. Oh, yeah. Um, I know uh, realnapalm.com yeah. is your website. Yeah. Uh, you got an album, Therapies, on iTunes. Yeah. You open for the likes of Drake, Soldier Boy, yeah. Trey Songs, others. Like, yeah. This Drake before he was popping pop it though. Still, you yeah. open for Drake. That's fucking something for the resume. Yeah, my also PR heard... people would not let me change that either. <laughs> I'll be trying. I'll be like, man, y'all gonna get me in trouble. They gonna be like, you ain't open for Drake. <laughs> so if it happened, it fucking happened. Uh, Hell yeah, so far going to her. That shit was lit. I also heard, I don't know if this is fucking true, but I heard uh, you did American Idol? You got on American Idol? Yeah, bro, and I didn't want to sign that contract. <laughs> you made the bullshit, like, ticket or whatever? They put you on the TV? Yeah, they was about to. <laughs> they was about to. They, to be honest with you, they used me the whole year. That year that I didn't do it, they um, ended up using me in the intro. I was in the intro of the, um, of the American Idol, like, uh, series the whole year. 
that shit was kind of lit. Like everybody kept seeing me. <laughs> right. And I, I ain't even had to sing a note, so it kind of did a little bit. It worked a little bit. It worked a little bit. What was yeah. fucked up with the contract? Not that I'm a lawyer, no shit about um, shit, but they trying to own your ass. Honestly, or yeah, I knew I was at like 28, I think, or something like that. 27, 28 when I, I did it, and um, uh, basically it said that like everything out of there they owned the publishing. I couldn't have a release schedule. And I'm not going to lie, like, a lot of people that I grew up with, shout out to my big sis, Kim. Um, she's in Chicago probably watching this shit. Um, but she uh, always had me studying people like Prince. So I kind of knew that that was like a bogus tie-in contract where you're going to give me this platform, but it's going to take me four years before I can bounce back to the artist I want to be versus who you guys want me to be. And I knew at 28, I was like, I'd rather just take my chances doing it myself because I know if I don't make it then I still am tied and bind binded to um say American Idol contestant on every show and everything that I do and I just wasn't fucking with that yeah I hear that so, it's got a bit of a lot a of people are gonna be like nah you just didn't make it nah I made it <laughs> anybody with a story gonna make it on one of those TV shows that's that's the more to this like yeah you know, not to give shit away, but... Right. So, obviously, you had, you know, more time in you as a pro athlete, but it appears yeah. that you sort of stepped away to, to do the music thing. Man, my agent, let my agent tell the story, man. That'd be funny, man. <laughs> I used to tell him I didn't want to get on the plane. <laughs> I used to tell him I didn't want to get in the plane, bro. Just because I'd be like, man, I think, I, I think I'm cold with this microphone, bro, and this pen. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have shows lined up and everything, bro. But no, nah, um, yeah, no. Nah, it, it was at one point. I kind, I think it. You know, being honest, I think it was just at the point where I knew um, I was fighting harder for f five and six, and not really drawn to wanting to fight for five and six my whole career um, as a receiver. Um, and then I knew that my heart was always really with music. Like, I mean, even in the damn Super Bowl, bro, I didn't watch, I didn't go in at halftime. I, I was staying outside watching Bruno Mars. <laughs> no shit. In the red, yeah, in the red hot chili. Like, on my, if you go on my Spotify, the song Moon Rock, I'm giving it away. And this is, I don't care. Come sue me. I love y'all, though. Because y'all, like, I, I just love y'all. Red hot chili peppers, everybody. Um, but I sampled red hot chili peppers and Moon Rock only because that was, like, one of the moments that, inspired me to want to walk away from football and be like, nah, I want that moment. Uh, Bruno Mars stood out there and he um, he did, uh, you know, you're amazing just the way you are. And I, I remember like the cell phones going up. Mm -hmm. And it was a big difference from that to watching like the people on the sideline be like, who the F are you, Palmer? And you guys are losing and you suck. And I knew Buddy had, like, cocaine charges and all kinds of, like, you know, I think he had, like, a case with, like, domestic something with a girl or some shit at the time, too. And But nobody cared. They just sang along to that song because it gave them a moment. So that, for me, was, like, more so what I really wanted out of life. Saw the power in it. Yeah, and, and I felt like I wanted to either be behind that or writing those kind of songs or be the person singing them. So we getting there, too. I'm gonna say so. Yeah, take take me through a little bit of the journey, the process. I mean, so you walk away from the game. And yeah, like, wait, I walked away too early, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be 100 with all y'all. I walked away early. I probably should have stayed till I was like 29, 29, 30. I used to think that you can't pop in the music industry and after 30, but you can. Sure. So I can understand that mentality yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Actually, but. But I've seen you on the on the contrary though. I say I've seen you start at like you know opening yeah. and you headlining shows at the Bluebird and shit. You yeah. Know what I mean? So you've definitely yeah. got traction. You've made yeah. waves. Yeah. Starting to do the damn thing. I was about to say I think also too me leaving early gave me enough time to get my feet wet in the industry, and learn like a lot of hard lessons, really early on. Shout out to my big bros, Top Flight, because um, they taught me a lot. Uh, Squizzy. Um, these are like DJs and, and rappers in the city. Uh, one of them, in which grew up with me at Elkhart, uh, AP. Um, but these guys are uh, people that like really taught me a lot about the music industry and kept me away from doing um, a lot of bad decisions. And 
I mean, my whole career playing football, I was always doing music on the side. Like, I was doing shows in the off season. Um, sometimes when I was on practice squad, I was doing shows during the season. So that kind of helped me establish myself in other cities, too, sure. um, to where people already knew I sang, I did music. Um, and then being a football player helped me get in the room. But it was like a couple people with me um all the time so where the where can the people find your music man uh, man everywhere spotify so if you go to spotify it's napalm is in capital n a capital p a l m or if you go to my um ig or twitter real napalm is my ig and twitter and i always have a link up there to either my spotify or my soundcloud i think my soundcloud up there right now I think they got a, it's called Smoke. We just dropped the song. So we dropping this uh this uh mixtape for 420. We let it play it? Yeah, play that thing. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to give away another pack of seeds because we're down to our last few minutes on this fucker. Hell yeah, let's but do we'll it. We'll have a back a backdrop. Stalked and slap. <laughs> Stalked and slap. The way you're going to win these? Same as always. Dark Horse Genetics Live at gmail.com. Real Napalm in the subject line. Fifth person. Go get them. Yeah. I'm going to check out this track and sign her off. When we're done here with the tracks over, we sign this fucker off. Enjoy uh, some real Napalm on the way out the door, folks. Let's I want to thank you for doing it. Thank you, brother. For thank sure. Thank you guys for having me, man. This is dope that you're doing this. And this Skittles is fire too, bro. Thank you, my man. Best rise, the best drives, a test drive. I'm the best guy with the best mind. Homegrown in the east, but still so much side, side. Nigga. nigga. And Danny Phantom always moving in silence. A nigga be coming inside of your view like a skinny iris. A nigga be coming inside of your view. Damn, that's just a violent. But I get the best time, they're the best of Irish, nigga. Full moon in these wild nights. And let's see what these white lies. If I hit your phone, it's for a good time. If I pull, if I pull up, up with the Dutch, it's about the good vibes. My high club. My own cushion on a rocket ship. We just put that up yesterday in a cell phone. Nice. Bitch, you trying to smoke? I want to smoke. Bitch, you trying to smoke? Right. All right, we out of here, everybody. Appreciate it. Check out Real Napalm. Check out his music. Yeah. I appreciate you coming down and talking a little NFL with us. No problem, man. Peace, no problem. everybody. Thank you.